Hi, my name is Jamie King. I'm sitting here with Doug Fresh, a bachelor in software and game development student, and we're looking at your capstone project. Tell me about your capstone project here, Doug. So I built a project inside of UDK. I named it Escherplex. It's a 3D puzzle game uh, built around the concept of dece deception. Uh, my goal was to challenge pretty much all levels of gamers, and I introduced this new principle to the puzzle genre uh, with the ability to walk on walls. All right, so show, bring up the Escher picture, for example, before we start playing the game. Let's look at the Escher. Okay, so tell me about Escher. All right, so MC Escher uh, was a drafter, a uh, draftsman, and he drew this painting in 1953. So you wanted to give the player this experience. Yeah. So it's a puzzle game you've built? Yes. Okay. Let's go back to your game. Walk through it and let's talk about your game. All right. So immediately I wanted the player to be immersed into a, the menu system. So this is actually an interactive menu with options and the ability to start the game and level select. So one, one thing that I wanted to incorporate was another MC Escher principle, his endless staircase. Um, where, I, where I wanted this uh, was throughout the game, but where I ended up implementing it was actually in the level select. So as you'll see here, the player enters into a room and they have a staircase on their right and their left. Um, by proceeding up the stairs, they increase their level. So this stairs, you'll notice, ends up wrapping them back to the same doorway. So that's the exact same door we just walked into. That is into, the exact same doorway. But it looked like we just walked up one yep. flight of stairs. Okay, cool. Um, in that same note, if the player goes all the way back up, so we're gonna we're gonna go to level one. So this would, this would be a pretty good piece of exercise equipment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it was endless. So notice we're at two, but since we want to go to level one, we're gonna we're gonna go back around down. So this is the room that you showed during your capstone presentation. Take us through it and explain it to to those who are watching the recording. Okay, so this is my interpretation of M C Escher's relativity. Uh, as you'll notice, the player immediately. Uh, is shown a few different directions that they can proceed. Um, in the last level, they're introduced to the concept of walking on walls, and it's actually the J key to enable it. So I'm just gonna enable that right quick. So the player can walk up along a surface and then continue along that surface until they run into another object. So the camera just went into first person mode then? Yeah, so it really, it, it shows the player that they, they're actually inside of a different walking mode as well as the icon in the corner. Okay, keep going. So uh, one thing that I want to show is the fact that this actually does like loop. So walking around the staircase right here, this is a set of staircases going forward and backwards that'll move the player around and around. Um, notice I was actually on the ceiling coming off of that. Yeah. Um, so it really can start getting very disorienting if you're not paying attention. Um, over here is where the player is forced to actually enable this because the player can't jump high enough to get up this. So this begins my disorientation in the world, uh, as well as the false doors that are throughout the level. Um, multiple directions of travel, so coming around here you can actually come back up and come along this ceiling. This is really MC Escher's like, stairs and perspective at work. Um, forcing the doors to be at a different perspective. So if I hit spacebar to, to reorient myself, you'll notice the door is actually on its side. Cool. Take us to the, uh, the level with the world. Box in a ball. Yeah. So let me go back into third person. So coming over here, um, I use uh, the idea of streaming to to chop in my levels, so if I open this back up, you'll notice the Escher room is actually not. Oh, I don't know if it'll let me load this. Yeah, here we go. So Escher room isn't loaded until I actually get into the realm. Oh, and this okay. is this is level streaming for UDK. <clears throat> so coming into box and a ball, um, the f the floor is actually where the door is. So the player jumps and falls through and down on top of the spherical uh, shape. Um, I notify the player that wall walking needs to be on because if the player does walk off the edge, they will just fall off and then end up dying and have to respawn. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of my little help. Let's talk hands. about this level. So this is, a, this is actually a, I think it's 30 something sided sphere. So it's not perfect, but it gives the idea 
of, of something round. For it's the a little user. like walking out on the outside of that yeah. ball in front of Epcot Center. Yeah. Um, okay. Without as many tessellations. And then I put lights uh, to represent different color zones so that the player knew at least they were moving along it instead of like looping back on themselves. So they knew once they got to a new section, the color would change. Mm -hmm. um, with that, uh, the entrance is in this green area and you actually walk inside the ball, which is where you can really see that you were on the outside of something. Cool. Um, the player, I, I show them a button, but upon inspection, they'll notice that gravity is actually towards the hole. So jumping will not allow you to fall through that. To get around uh, with that concept of falling when you when you enable gravity, you have to come back to the top of the sphere, which is you started on just the other side. And then you change gravity. And then you change gravity to fall on top of the the square. Okay. Um, and are you wall walking? Surface. Wall walking again? Yeah. So, okay. upon being on top of the square, you come around, and now you're able to enter into. Uh, the box which is on the inside so same concept of walking on the walls to get over to it but this button you'll notice is actually a space bar so this is informing the player that hey maybe they should activate gravity and upon doing so you'll notice they fall through and load into another section so the level wasn't originally there until the player does fall through gravity and this this can this is my concluding room uh, which gives me level expansion from here. That's a lot of doors. Yeah, a lot of doors. So tell me, this is your capstone project. What was challenging about it? What what made it a capstone worthy? So my biggest challenge was actually interfacing with uh, UDK's visual scripting language. Uh, here's an example of a script that I had to deal with. No maximize. Or don't maximize. Yeah, let's zoom in a little. So bit. you know, it's a little pixelated, but the basics of it is this is a menu system. So each doorway you enter into, this would be level select, and this is loading into level select, which is a subscript filled with more of these nodes and connections. Uh, each one of these over here represents the new doorways to move the player throughout the level. Um, this is a snippet of the, the node system. Uh, I have over 500 active nodes uh, in my game. Now you also did Unreal Script too. On top of this, you made your own Kismet Kismet nodes in yes. Unreal Script. Tell so, me about that. Um, besides making them in Kismet themselves, like this one over here, which is to draw, and this is just a subsequence actually of Kismet, uh, I had to create a one node in particular was Modulus, and creating that down in Unreal Script and then bringing it back up into UDK uh, was actually kind of fun. You, you write low-level code in Unreal Script, and then UDK, upon booting, realizes that your scripts contain a Kismet node and interface it into the Kismet, which allowed me to add connections and draw into it and use it. So you did the level design, you did the Unreal Script, you did the Kismet, you did the full game. Yeah. How much time did you put into this? <laughs> uh, I'm just under 200 hours, surprisingly. Really? Yeah. If if my initial research at, at the beginning wouldn't have been as extensive as it was, I probably would have been looking at more like 300 hours because I would have been stumbling over myself a lot. Cool. Well, good job. You graduate in nine quarters? Uh, or not nine quarters? I don't graduate Sorry. in nine quarters. <laughs> you graduate in nine months? Yes, in nine months uh, I'll be looking for a job in industry. What any particular game genre you want us to keep doing UDK? You want to what, what? What would be your ideal situation? As of right now, I'd I'd actually kind of like to go for more of maybe even an indie company where I can actually use multiple of the skills that I've accumulated over time instead of just sticking with one particular field of expertise. You like wearing a lot of hats. Yes. Cool. Okay. Well, good job. Very impressive capstone. Thank you.